Hi, I'm Mark with American Snowmobiler Magazine. We have Steve, who is the product manager for Yamalube today, and we want to talk a lot about fuel. We also want to talk about these products that we have here, but I think we, we had a conversation you and I did, oh, I was a, a few months ago now, about ethanol fuels, about additives, and uh, basically about educating the general public. Things that the ordinary person, whether it be a snowmobiler, a boater, an ATV, or a motorcyclist, um, things that they don't know. Talking about percentages, we talked about percentages as far as semi-synthetic and full synthetic lubricants go. Uh, another thing we discussed a couple months back was the percentage of ethanol that is in gasoline. When you pull up to the pump, uh, a, a lot of consumers assume, well, it says it's going to be 10% ethanol is there's going to be 10% ethanol in that fuel. But what, what you've told me is that's not always the case. That is correct. That, that is not always the case. You'll see a little white sticker on it that contains up to 10%. But there's also companies we've seen the testing. There's a company that does, uh, Grumman has some fuel tests. They test fuels twice a year. And you can get the report and they test it all over the country at multiple places. And it ranges anywhere from 4% to 15% in E10 gasoline right now. So we're seeing high percentages of ethanol out there as it is. So and that's an E10. That's not an E15. That's correct. So that's what just blew me away. You know, it could be 4% to 14%. 14%, 4, 4 more percent. And, you know, I drive a 2001 truck, you know, which is right about the time when they started moving everything over to be able to work with E10 gasoline. So I have components in my truck that do not work with even E10, let alone E14. Uh, so, you know, that type of what, what you told me was to take a little <laughs> fuel tester yeah. everywhere you go. So how can people test their fuel when they're out on the trail to make sure they're not getting bad fuel? The easiest way to do it is, is just a little test tube. Just get a little 100 mil test tube and what you do is put a mark at 10 millimeter and fill water to the 10 millimeter mark. Then fill the rest of 90 mils with gasoline and just put your thumb over it and just shake it up or even a cork if you don't want to put gasoline on your finger and just shake it up for a while and then stop shaking and let it all settle out. What you're doing is you're creating phase separation. So all of a sudden your 10 millimeter now will move up to 15 milliliters, which then, then will mean you've got 10% fuel in there, or ethanol, I should say, in your fuel. And that's how it's easy to do the shake test on that. It's really easy to do that. Another thing to do is if you want to talk about how ethanol ta uh, pulls moisture out of the air, is just take a, a, a glass container or something, put a little bit of gasoline in it on a nice, warm, humid day, just stick it outside. Gasoline is clear. You know, when it pumps out of the tank and there's no contaminants and it's nice and clear, nice warm day, just put it outside, you know, put it in a safe place. Don't put it where it's going to be near anything that can cause a problem. And just go back in a couple hours and watch it. And you'll actually see it starting to change. It'll start getting cloudy, you know, it'll get cloudier and cloudier, and all of a sudden it'll just phase separate there. You know, it depends on the humidity amount, but it, can, it will happen by just letting gas sit out there. So it's very important how you store gasoline. Yeah. So don't leave your gas cans out on the end of the dock on a 90 degree day. <laughs> That's correct, yeah. Uh, the biggest thing you run into is another thing with ethanol is colder temperatures, phase separation can happen faster mm -hmm. with even less than 0.49%. So there, there's been reports that are showing that it's 0.25%, you can actually have phase separation. So that would, can occur in that with the ethanol uh, fuels, in, especially in the snow belt area. Sure. Fuels today are not like fuels of the past, obviously. And what can we do to keep our snowmobile engines running smoothly on the new gasolines of today? Well, today's gasolines do burn dirtier than older gasolines did. Even though they still, anything that burns carbon, you're gonna have carbon deposits left inside. It'll be on the intake valves, the, uh, the piston, the rings, and also the exhaust valves. Yamaha's had a product, or Yamaloop line, it's called Ring Free, it developed back in 1989. And it's been through a couple changes, and the latest change is actually our Engine Met RX. So this is a product that's well proven in there, it's a detergent for inside the engine. What you do is you run this every time. You fill up with gasoline, you put one ounce to every 10 gallons if you use the concentrated, or you can use a little five ounce, or a 3.2 ounce bottle, which is five gallons of gasoline. What it does is basically it cleans that inter all, everything out. It cleans the carbon. So you put it in the gasoline, it gets into the intake valve, it cleans the carbon off the intake valve, cleans it off the piston. If you use this continuously, every time you fill up, if you look inside that engine, it'll look like the day it was built. That's how clean it will keep it. And I know that because before coming to Yamaha and Yamalube, I was actually a mechanic in the field. 
So I worked on engines and I could tell very quickly if somebody was using the old ring-free product or not. So it's very good, very well proven. And one thing we did with the also the engine Mat RX is we put corrosion inhibitors in there for the ethanol as well. So you've got the fuel that has some in there and you only use that every se after seven days, but on the engine Mat RX you use it all the time. So if you're using your gas up in seven days, you don't have to run the fuel Mat RX, just run the engine Mat RX. And we've got corrosion inhibitors for four metals in there. It's basically for steels, aluminums, yellow metals, and silver solder. Silver solder is on your electric fuel pumps, so people have had electric fuel pump failures or fuel sender failures. That's all used in that area, so it stops the corrosion of those four metals. So if you've got fuel that's sat for a while and you add some product to it, is there, is there any way to make that fuel good again? No, once fuel goes bad, it's bad. There's nothing that can rejuvenate the octane level. There's nothing that can take, you know, bad gasoline or sour gasoline and make it burnable again. Your basic best thing, if gas goes bad, get rid of it. That's your best cause, because if you try putting stuff in there, additives and everything else, you're changing the chemistry, you're going to have running performance issues, and you could probably cause a lot bigger problems. So the least expensive way, get rid of it. And that same goes if you have phase separated fuel, don't put stuff in to re-emulsify that water into the gasoline, because you've got to add so much of that product and you're changing the chemistry. Now you're replacing a very sensitive fuel error ratio with water and this other chemical, which again, you're going to cause problems. So if phase separation occurs or bad gasoline, just get it out of the system, clean it out, and start fresh again. And again, seven days. Seven days. Seven days is a magic number. Yep. If you don't use it, you've got to do something. So for us, summarizing our sleds is a big deal in storage. What should we be doing with our fuels, with our sleds, uh, using these products for storage? Now storage is, is very important. A lot of people don't do the process correct. What you want to do is on your very last ride of the season, get yourself some a fuel stabilizer. I recommend Fuel Med RX, of course. And you put one ounce to one gallon of gasoline, and on your last run of the day or the season, just go out and have a good time. Go have fun. This way you're running stabilized fuel through the entire fuel system. By just adding it before you fire up the engine and fog it down is not ensuring that everything gets through the, gets through the fuel system. So doing it on your last ride of the season, then you're making sure everything's getting through there. Then what you do is go and fill the gas tank up to seven eighths full. Do not top off your fuel tank completely full. You need to have a little air gap in there because gas expands and contracts throughout the season. As temperatures change when it's in storage, it happens. So if you're full, you're gonna end up pushing fuel out the vent, which is very dangerous and we don't recommend that. So seven eighths full, and then put on one ounce to one gallon of gasoline of the, uh, the Fuel Med RX. Then what you wanna do is you wanna fire up the engine you want to get nice and warm, and we recommend that you go ahead and fog the engine down. Even two strokes and four strokes, you need to fog them down. Four strokes will sit there and the valves are sitting open, especially during season. I know a lot of people try to fire them up all during the summer and all that, but you've got moisture sitting inside that engine. As temperatures change, it's like a glass of iced tea. You know, on a humid day, you get the condensation. Same thing happens with the engine. It's sitting in your garage, it's cool, then it warms up, and then when it cools off again, that moisture attacks the engine. It also goes inside that engine. So we want to make sure you fog the engine down. This way you don't have to start it up all off season. Just let it sit fog down real heavy. And you want to spray fogging oil in there to where it comes out bellowing a lot of smoke. I mean, you might make some neighbors mad and all that stuff with all the smoke or they might think your house is on fire, but when it's smoking good, that means you've done a good job in fogging it down. Yamaha is all four strokes, not two strokes. So we've got changing oil instead of adding injection oil. Um, and so we have to do oil changes every once in a while. When should we be doing those? The best time to do an oil change, especially on a four stroke, is end the season. Okay, before you fog it down, change, you know, fire, fire up the engine, warm it up, change your oil, change your filter. This way you've got fresh oil in there. Then you do your fogging process. So throughout the summer, you don't have a used oil in there with acids and water sitting there and on your bearings and all that. You've got a fresh oil sitting in there. And some people say, well, you got moisture coming in and out on, on the new oil and all that, but you got a strong additive package. You have additives and the base oil in there that has not been broken down by a running engine as you had all season long. So it's best to storm with fresh oil in there. Change the oil at the end of the season and then be done. Not to be too political, but some of what we've talked about here discusses issues with ethanol fuels. Is there anything out there that, that it may be on the horizon or you, that you've heard about that could be a replacement or a better option than ethanol? You know, what, basically what I've heard in, in the industry is, is they've been working on what they call butanol. Butanol comes from the same fermentation process as, you know, basically the same thing as we do with getting it from corn or sugar cane or anything like we do with ethanol. But what the early tests have shown, it's not hydroscopic. 
And also the BTUs is very close to gasoline, so you're not going to lose the horsepower by using this in a mixture of gasoline. And, and being a renewable resource, that's very good for the environment, very good for our future and all that. But there's very good things going on with butanol right now, and all the tests we've seen really look good. So sure. that's possibly the next few years maybe that might be coming along in the lines of being a replacement for ethanol. I think it's important. One thing that you mentioned there is uh, loss of power. Even though your E85 or you know your 15% ethanol um, may uh, be cheaper at the pump right now, you're actually not getting the power out of that amount of fuel. So you're you're going to get fewer miles per gallon on an E85 fuel than you will on an E87 or an 87 octane fuel, correct? That's correct. Basically, more ethanol in there, your fuel economy does change on your vehicles. And you brought up a, 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 an important point, because if you look at automobiles, automobiles have a mandated fuel mileage they gotta meet. And what they've been doing is they've been thinning up their oils, because as you add ethanol, they've got this mileage to meet, say, whatever their corporate average has gotta be across their fleet. So if you put ethanol in there, what happens is that fuel economy goes down. So you, in order to meet their mileage, they're actually taking their oils and thinning them up. So automotive oils are going a whole different direction than what would be for the motorsports and your snowmobiles and all that stuff. So it's very important not to put an automotive oil into another product because they are, it's a different chemistry and it's designed to help the automotive engines themselves, not for what a motorsports engine or a snowmobile, in fact, needs. So you, you know, be careful when you mix your oils up and watch what you're buying. Well, thank you, Steve, for coming here. It's been very educational. Hopefully, it'll be educational for our readers and for consumers out there. And for more information on the full line of Yamalube products and more information on what we've talked about, you can go to yamalube.com. Yes.